Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Cancer with Dr. Denise Ejo, the CEO of Commod Cancer Foundation in partnership with Plus TV Africa. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And we want to welcome you to another edition of one of our programs. Today's focus is sarcoma, a type of cancer. In the house where I got, I have got Dr. Habib, Mohammed Habib. Hello, Doc. How are you? <clears throat> fine. Thank you. I'm nice fine. to see you. Thank you. Thank you for, for thank you for agreeing to join us this uh, uh, today. We want to thank everyone for joining us and welcome to this program. As we do, cancer is our focus and that's the discussion. So what is it? What is this month? This is July. July is Sarcoma Awareness Month. So our focus is going to be on sarcoma. However, let me give you the briefings of what's going on in um, July. What is sarcoma? Sarcoma are common cancers that can affect any part of your body. A key symptom of sarcoma is a lump that gets bigger quickly, and most people get diagnosed when their sarcoma is about the size of a large tin of big beans. That's how I have to describe it. And <laughs> welcome to today's show. And I'm going to tell you this month is World Head and Neck Cancer, which is on the 27th of July. So all of you that are planning events, don't forget, we need to be talking about World Head and Neck Cancer on the 27th. So let's start our conversation. Together we fight, together we win. At Commonwealth Cancer Foundation, we welcome you to this program once again. So, Doc, let me introduce you. Dr. Habib is the head of oncology at the NSIE Luth Cancer Center in Lagos. His area of research interests are prostate cancer, breast cancer, colorectal cancers, head and neck cancers, and rare cancers like sarcoma. He is a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons, Radiology and a member of the Association of Radio Radiation and Clinical Oncologists in Nigeria, known as ARCON. Very interesting. And the American Society of Clinical Oncologists, ASCO, and the Quality Assurance Team for Radiation Oncology in Nigeria. Wow. Doc, huh. all these your organizations, me and them, we're having a conversation as we keep going. Welcome and thank you for joining us this uh, today. Thank you. So let's go. We're going to be talking about sarcoma, and it's a type of cancer most people don't know about it. We hear about it. Even I have just done a bit of homework on it, and it's been quite interesting. That I realize now nah, I don't even know what they're talking about. So let me ask you. You are the specialist. What is sarcoma, and is sarcoma a serious cancer? Yes, sarcoma is a serious cancer because sarcoma is more difficult to treat than most other common cancers. Now, sarcoma is cancer of the connective tissues. What is cancer? Cancer are abnormal cells that continue to multiply. They have the tendency to invade the surrounding normal structures, and they also have the tendency to spread to this part. part. What is connective tissues? We already know what organs are. We have the eye, the the lungs, the ovary, the breast. The, the connective tissue is what holds this up together. It holds it together and supports it. Mainly muscles, bones, blood. You know, these structures are structures that connect other organs and that hold them in place. Sarcoma is the cancer of this connective tissue. It is not a very common, uh, you know, malignancy, but it is. We, we, we see a lot of sarcoma because of the population. And sarcoma has different types, like I said, can be subdivided into uh, bone, bony sarcomas and soft tissue sarcomas. Then we have, in the bone sarcoma, we have many other variants, like airwing sarcoma, like giant uh, cell tumor, like chondro sarcoma, and many other types. Then the soft tissue sarcoma, we also have varied, like, the smooth muscle sarcoma, which we call leomal sarcoma. We have the straighted muscle sarcoma. We have blood sarcomas, you know, forming part of the soft tissue sarcoma. Sarcomas are varied. What makes sarcoma very important is that because it's the connective tissue, uh, the uh, cancer, they have usually good blood supply. And this blood supply is what makes it very easy for it to spread from one Part of the body, which we call the primary side, to distant side. So sarcoma 
can also be of different grades. It could be the aggressive one, it could be the indolent one. The sarcomas that occur in areas that are not highly vascularized, uh, like the sarcomas of, of the fatty tissue, laposarcoma or chondrosarcoma, which is not very vascularized, they are a bit more indolent than those of the muscle, than those of the main bone, that's like the osteosarcoma and the uh, straighted muscle sarcomas. Wow. Sarcoma can also affect anybody. Any age, any race, any profession, sarcoma can affect. So it's very important we all know what sarcoma is. And usually it will present with uh, uh, pain if it is affecting the bony structure, pain and swelling. But if it is affecting the soft tissue, most of the time it, it comes as a lump, but it's usually a painless lump. By the time it becomes painful in the soft tissue, it is already getting advanced. Are they rare though? They are rare, but not very rare. Okay, I think you would, not, you would have met somebody that had amputation of the bone because of sarcoma. They are rare because they are not as common as breast cancer. They are not as common as prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, and all that. But it's, it's not something that we don't come across. Okay. So now, based on that, from that understanding of sarcoma, because I'm finding sarcoma is very hard to understand. So let me let me continue to go with this. Um, so what is the cause of sarcoma? Okay. Most of the time, it's sporadic which I mean is that you cannot trace the cause. Of course, you have a small percentage of sarcoma that we can trace to genetic mutation to certain syndromes. For example, there's something called neurofibromatosis. Uh, uh, patients that have neurofibromatosis, you see them have multiple nodules which continue to get, some of them continue to get bigger and may have what we call malignant transformation. And uh, this is one of the cause of it. Uh, and many also people have what we call Lee from any syndrome. It's a genetic mutation that has to do with what we call tumor suppression gene. We all have uh, cancer produced in our, in our system, but we have you know, agents that are able to suppress it. The, the, that's tumor suppression gene. Our gene can produce agents that can suppress it. But when there's defective in this protection, then those tumor cells, they have leeway to flourish and then it manifests as cancer. So patients will live from any syndrome also who have sarcoma. Then there are some uh, people who have polyps in their GIT, in their colon. You know, Such people may have genetic condition called familiar adenomatosis polyposis coli. Those polyps could also degenerate into sarcoma. However, Majority of people that have sarcomas, you cannot say this is the cause. It's just a, 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 a sporadic transformation of the gene. Wow. Okay. It's, it's so so basically, you can't know the cause. Okay. So you see, that's a very good starting point because cancer on its own is a very complex disease that a lot of us, especially those of us that sit on it, if you will notice, a lot of people from low middle income countries across the world are of the opinion maybe they did something wrong. And some people think it's or somebody else's portion and so we don't actually take treatment on time and we always that's why we in low middle income countries will resort to going to um, religious centers where you come from when you are saying we don't actually yeah we can't narrow it down so let me ask you a question cool so can it be cured and if it can what are the processes or what are the expectations i'm not talking about the treatment options i'm talking about just the cure Yes, it can be cured, but it can only be cured if it is detected and managed early and treated early. Once it has spread from the primary side to other part of the body, it becomes uh, a case that cannot be cured. In this case, we now have to give palliative treatments that we have to keep in. You have to try and suppress the rate of growth of the disease, but it can be cured if caught early. Okay, thank you. Okay, viewers, let, let us take a break here now, and then we'll be coming back. We'll be continuing our conversation with Dr. Uh, Habib uh, on this discussion on sarcoma, and let's see how much we can get. But one of the key things I've taken away is that 
it can be cured if diagnosed early. And we also know that there's no particular cure for um, cause for sarcoma. So two things were picked up today, no particular cause, and it can be cured if diagnosed early. Let me put the if. So let's take a short break now, and we'll be back shortly. Uh, thank you. Stay with us. This is Common Cancer Foundation, Dr. Denise Edjo. <music> Welcome back and thank you all for staying with us. This is Como Cancer Foundation in partnership with um, Plus TV Africa as we discuss sarcoma, a type of cancer. Okay, Doc, thank you for how far. And like I said, we've got two things that I've actually picked up on, on what is, I'm trying to pick up things that are misconceptions. A lot of the time we have a lot of misconceptions, but let me go to what are the treatment options? Because, you know, cancer... Is this is the c word and i'm very mindful i live with the disease so i and i know that my treatment option is different from others uh and the way you've described it is um mm. so can you talk us through the treatment options for sarcoma if yes, there's any have, specific one yes we, we have five major options of treatment for sarcoma mm. uh we must recognize that sarcomas is a, they are very it's a spectrum of disease so we cannot have the same form of treatment for all. It depends on investigation, what we see at the time we detected it, uh, what are the, what there is something called immunohistochemistry, which tells us the character of the, that particular type of uh, sarcoma. However, the major treatments are surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, hormone therapy is usually not applicable to sarcoma. But targeted therapy is also applicable. So I will go through, I will quickly run through. Surgery usually is done to remove the tumor. That's when it is caught very early and it's resectable. But it can also be used to take sample to test for the disease, what we call biopsy. And at times, if the tumor is so large that it's weighing down the patient, you can just do surgery even if it is advanced. But in such case, the surgery you are doing is not curative. It's just a palliative surgery. Then radiotherapy is the use of ionizing radiation to treat cancer. Examples of ionizing radiations are X-rays, gamma rays, proton beam, and there are some other you know, beams that you can use. The ionizing radiation, they have the effect of chemically burning. When you irradiate a tissue, it oxidizes the tissue when you are using ionizing radiation. The X-ray we use for normal tests that we do our chest X-ray, especially if you want to get a job, that X-ray can also be used for radiotherapy. However, the energy level for radiotherapy is in millions of voltage. Why that for tests is just in thousands of voltage. So if you increase the energy level, maybe you use it for treatment. So uh, radiotherapy can be used either for radical treatment, that's curative treatment, or for palliative treatment to treat bones that you know, have heart spread. Most of the time, chemotherapy is involved in treatment of sarcoma because sarcomas, they have tendency to spread because most connective tissue are highly vascularized. So chemo is usually involved, uh, chemo, radio, and, and surgery. A few forms of uh, sarcomas require use of targeted therapy. Targeted therapy are immunotherapy. They are immune therapy designed, you know, to mimic our own immunity to help treat, you know, cancers. For example, we have imatinib for what we call uh, GIST, gastrointestinal stroma tumor. Imatinib is one of the type of targeted therapy that we use in sarcoma. They are very effective. They may be expensive, though, but they are effective. Hormonal therapy is often not used in uh, treatment of sarcoma. So uh, these are the uh, various major ways. Of course, there are other adjunct treatments like the use of painkiller and the use of uh, antibiotics and all that in, uh, in addition you know, to help you know, treat the patient. But the major treatments are surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and targeted therapy for sarcomas. Wow, thank thank you. So that, that that puts us in line with most of the treatment options that we have on most cancers are still applicable in sarcomas. 
but it depends on what you have, where you are, what stages you are will determine what you get. Now, can I ask a very interesting question? Because misconceptions are very, very interesting. Can you give us the misconceptions about sarcomas? Because I myself have tried to understand this disease and I'm totally lost. I'm not a medical doctor, as you most probably know. So it is this one is all because I live with the disease. But you talked, for instance, you talked about the gamma knife. I know, I know gamma knife. Um, you call it gamma something. I call it gamma knife. Is it the same thing? We have gamma knife. You have stereostatic radiotherapy. All are parts of radiation therapy. It's a form of radiotherapy. So gamma knife is a more precise uh, type of radiotherapy used for a very small lesion, usually at the base of the skull or at the brain. Yeah, the gamma knife. Uh, instead okay, of, no, because you use the word gamma is why I asked, because I thought, ah, I have had gamma knife. That's why I asked you. So I thought, ah, he used gamma. Yeah, what, gamma what? knife is, uses gamma rays. Gamma, gamma rays. Ra gamma rays. Uh, yes, like I said, it, it could be X-rays, it could be gamma rays, it could be uh, electron beam, it could be proton beam, all these are ionizing radiation. So gamma knife uses gamma ray. We call it gamma knife because it's the dose of radiation you use is so much that as you are irradiating the lesion, you are burning off the lesion. So it's as if you are literally cutting the lesion with irradiation. So it's a knife because it's cutting the radiation, but it is gamma because it's using gamma ray, and it is radiotherapy because any form of therapy that uses radiation is radiotherapy. So it's a form of radiotherapy. Okay, so now, from, okay, based on what you've now said now, now let's move on to the next thing. So from your from your take on where we are with this gamma, um, what not gamma? Sorry, with sarcomas, what would be three main things that you think a sarcoma patient needs to know to be able to help them navigate through the treatment options? Okay, the first thing is that the first time you diagnose it, the first time you see it, that's the best time to start treatment. If there is delay, it's worsen prognosis because sarcoma most of the time are vascularized tumors. So because they are vascularized, they have tendency to spread. Please, can you tell me what is vascularized in simple English? I'm trying to do it for my viewers because yes. at the end of the day, I am okay. so learned in this yes. thing. But yeah. Yes. When I say it's vascularized, I just mean that it has a lot of blood supply. Blood vessels passes through there. Because there's a lot of blood supply, there is tendency for the vessel to take cancer cells and take the, the, through the blood to other parts of the body. And once that is done, we say it has metastasized, that it has spread. And when, once it's spread, it becomes a more complex you know, issue. It becomes more difficult to treat. It's easier to treat it when it's still in the primary site, when it's localized, when it has not left the primary place, than when it has spread. So okay, can I ask you another question? Yes. Yeah. Is it is it a cancer that is visible? Well, it can be visible. Usually, it, it, usually most of the time is visible because it it will come either as a lump, usually as a swelling, usually lump or a, a swelling, and is usually tender over time. It may not be tender initially if it is in soft tissue but if it is in the bone it's always painful once it's in the bone it's usually detected by pain most people that has bone sarcoma claim that they they had trauma something hits that bone before they started feeling the bone so they associate the cause to the trauma to the bone but we think that the trauma only cause attention to it it's because it's there that's why it's more painful during the trauma but whichever way, bone tumor is usually associated with trauma. Why soft tissue sarcoma? Most of the time, the patient will say they didn't have and nothing happened. They just saw a boy growing, and that boy transformed into a, a sarcoma. That's so, okay. so, so, sorry for cutting you at that point. I wanted to get that because a lot of people don't understand that part of it. Okay, so you said the first one you were giving me. Give us the first point about yeah. um, what we should be aware of. Okay, go on. I said three. Yeah, three. Then secondly, chemotherapy does not kill. Most people, most people with sarcoma 
the, the people would have told them that chemotherapy killed normal cells as it killed the cancer cells and, and as such. I always let people know, or my patients know, that there is a window, what we call therapeutic window. The dose that kills the abnormal cell is different from the dose that will kill the normal cell. The dose that kills the normal cell is higher than what kills the abnormal cell. And also, the, with the dose that kill the cancer cell, if there is a damage to the normal cell, the, the chemo is giving in, in, is giving in fractions. That is giving at intervals. So there is interval for repair of normal cell. So at the time you are giving the second cycle or third cycle, there would have been the normal cell would have already been repaired. But the cancer cell does not have ability to repair. So usually, as you give it in cycles, there is cumulative destruction of the cancer cells while the normal cell always gets repaired. So there's repair of normal cell, there's a sparing of the normal cell and cumulative destruction of cancer cells. That's another thing. Then thirdly, we talk of food. For most people, they hear that when you're having cancer, you shouldn't take carbohydrates. Some even say you should not take food at all. You should just take vegetables or fruits. Uh, this, is, this is not uh, correct. We all know that you need balanced diet to have good immunity. Your, you need to, your, your body needs to be able to fight the cancer cells. And to, to be able to fight, you need balanced diet so that all, all, all the nutrients you need, is, you, you get. So you can have good immunity to fight the cancer cells. Uh, so these are three misconceptions I, I think should be corrected. And you then made, should, you've made my day. Yes, if, if I should add one more to it, many people believe that uh, if you have sarcoma, you shouldn't come to the hospital. It's a spiritual uh, attack. I always let them know that for everything, there is a way you do it. After all, none of us sit down at home and pray for money to come for salary. You have to go out to work if you can, you can, you can back your work up with payers. The same way, even if you think you will be spiritual attack, you have to come to the hospital for treatment, then back the treatment up with payers if you want to. You understand? But you can't stay at home and be praying for healing without coming out, walking towards the healing. If you need healing, you come to the appropriate place. And uh, some even will tell you it's alternative therapy. I say if you go for alternative therapy, you, you, do, you get the alternative result. If you want to get the real result, you get the real orthodox treatment. So don't go look for alternative therapy when you want the real results. If you want real results, you get the real treatment. Awesome. Thank Doc, thank you. Thank you for preaching this thing. I am very grateful because every time I try to say, and so that people get it, I actually take chemotherapy. I don't think anybody can see that. And I've taken it today. It doesn't mean very much. Please, if you are if they are giving it to you, take it. It's better yeah. to take it and have a chance to fight than to sit down and wait for other people to tell you, oh, well, maybe if you had. If you had, it's late. Why wait for if you had when you could have had it at the beginning and fought and then done everything Dr. Habib has just explained. Now I'm going to ask you, as you know, we are cancer advocacy. We actually campaign for the awareness for treatment of cancer patients, and we actually need people to be able to survive. And I think I've lost one person that has been in your space in the last one year. So let me go for the question. Please share two takeaways from this campaign. It's an awareness campaign in my own eye. Um, as we engage and um, specific the public and government support group the, this type of people i want two takeaways from it as we round up so for support group you are doing a great job as support group most people don't know what sarcoma is and it is by programs like this that you know then i uh, the the there are, we have a lot of institutions out there that can participate to help your organization, NGOs like you, because uh, this uh, program is, is, is for the public. And if they can do their social uh, responsibility, corporate social responsibility by sponsoring uh, agency like yours, we will, will be for the better. For, for people out there, I think the first time you come to the, the you, you diagnose any swelling or anything like that, you go to the hospital because the first time is the best time. And then you also get 
uh, the main treatment. Don't go for orthodox, uh, you know. If if at all, do the main with the orthodox. I didn't know if I got your question correctly. Yes, you did actually. Very spot on. Thank you, thank you very much, um, Doc. Thank you for for the two key points, and um, they are very good takeaways from us. For all those watching, um, cancer cancer is real. It is not running away. Face it head on, as the doctor has explained to us. Listen to what your doctors are saying. Don't believe in myths and um, um, and and focus on facts because facts, especially if you get it from the right doctor, you will get what you're looking for. And I'm going to give one key point to all anybody taking chemo or trying to take chemo or trying to take see a, a doctor for cancer. The name of the doctor you're looking for is called an oncologist. Please, not every doctor is an oncologist. And they are the ones that can give you the chemotherapy. So please, to the public, please always ask questions with whoever is being your doctor going forward. Dr. Habib, I want to say a very big, big, big thank you to you for joining us today and for sharing with us. You know, I may have to call you back again because, you know, this conversation is not for just today. It's as we go along, we have to keep making uh, our voices heard. And from my perspective, I am an advocate. So I'm pulling you for the advocacy part. That is why I asked you the last question. I need us all. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, any last thing you want to say? Yes, I just want to say that uh, chemotherapy may have side effects, but they are usually temporary. And not every patient has the side effect. And when you have the side effects, turn to your doctor. They are palliative for the side effects. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. I take chemo. So anybody that is worried about chemo, please, I'm smiling. I take chemo. I took it today. I'll still take it later. I'm taking it tomorrow. Don't run away from it. You just follow the, the side effects. You cry with the side effects and you move on. It's just there's no big deal to it. They always doctors, they have all the all the concoctions they need to give you. So all those worrying about chemotherapy, please don't. And I want to take this opportunity now for all of you. You can follow us on Common Cancer Foundation on any of our social media handles. We have various activities and we advertise activities. To, uh, we know that we advertise, we share ad, ad, activities of other cancer organizations across the country that will benefit. So if you have any, together we fight, together we're going to win the race. So let's all work together. Let's make a difference and let's come to the point. You'll find us on all our pages. And now we've also got this new one called uh, Threads. Common Cancer Foundation has now gone on has now got a Threads account as far as I understand. I haven't checked it yet, but I, I understand we have one. So go and check it out and go and look at what's going on and please follow us. And if Dr. Habib is NSIA, NSIA, please go and check what's going on in NSIA Luth and you should be able to get information if you're trying to get information on cancer treatment. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you and we look forward to seeing you again as we come back to this conversation um, in the next few weeks. Have a fantastic time. Thank you all.